You don't have to have a baby to grow on Instagram. Okay. I would not recommend that strategy at all. So it's IGTV is no longer promoted. More money going to creators is like, a, you know, it, it, it's a must. Instagram, I think, has been really, really unfriendly to creators. Yay. Look at this BTS setup. I'm so <laughs> impressed. Hey guys, welcome. Today we have John, finally. <laughs> I've announced our interview on Instagram, what, like four months ago? <laughs> People were asking questions and they... <laughs> it's just, a, it's just a, we've been building momentum to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's finally here. Hey uh, John has an amazing story. He worked for YouTube, worked for Instagram, and now he left his corporate job to become a creator. So today we, we're going to have two parts of the interview. We're going to talk about growing on Instagram organically, which doesn't really happen. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to talk about that. Never uh, happened to me. No, 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 no. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Only when I posted uh, pictures from the hospital delivering a baby. <laughs> this is when organic growth happened and I got like a thousand new followers. This is like <laughs> the only time. Well, we're, we're going to make it so you don't have to have a baby to grow on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, I promise. <laughs> I promise. Yeah. And the second part, we're going to talk about your strategy to grow from zero to whatever you're trying to achieve yeah. because you have this unique case having worked for both YouTube and Instagram and now you're gonna uh, take these platforms and you know become a creator totally so and uh, if I could say I, I watch your videos and I know I like you love getting into tactics and tips so we'll get super specific with this video so if you don't have a notepad get it out and if it's not filled by the end of this interview then I haven't done my job so let's then get right we're gonna it. have the second interview <laughs> and answer all your questions in yeah. comments. So any questions that you have during the video, please ask them down in comments below because uh, we might have part two. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, let's talk about organic growth. Yeah. <laughs> this has happened to me once. Let's talk about reels because I know this would be number one instrument you would use for organic growth, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think uh, I hear all the time like growth like on Instagram, what's going on, but I truly believe that people are using strategies that they did in 2017, 2016, and trying to get away with like it in 2021. Hashtags still work, but what I see is like, uh, let's take a step back, there's five surfaces on Instagram, right? Feed, stories, live, IGTV, and now reels. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, like what's the oldest like format? Feed, right? Yeah. And what's the most saturated? Feed, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people are just continuing to do feed photos, feed videos, when there's a ton of competition there because that's the format that feels most natural. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you think about a format like Reels, like it's simple like supply and demand, right? Yeah, it's just Reels don't, like for me, they don't yeah. feel too natural because I'm not this, I kind of compare Reels to TikTok, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, TikTok is not my form. My format yeah. is long form video yeah. and uh, posting like uh, photos with yeah. captions. Yeah. Um, but like, can you talk about the strategy around reels? Um, how often mm -hmm. uh, do I need to write a caption? Do I need to use hashtags? Like what would be the yeah. best practice? So one, it, like I think like, like there's always a popular version of the format, but that doesn't mean that's the format in and of itself. So dance videos are definitely popular on mm -hmm. reels and TikTok, yeah. but you know, that's not the be all end all. And uh, I think there's a whole genre right now of like tutorial videos, career videos, finance advice mm -hmm. that's like happening yeah. on reels. Um, and I think if, if I had to put it simply, you know, a lot of people, I even see them posting like 28 second feed videos. Mm -hmm put that on a reel, make it vertical. And, you know, mm -hmm. even if you're putting the same content, um, you know, it's just like, I think people think of it as a dance video with a ton of music. I would think about it as a 30 and some people are getting 60 second video as like reels expand. So mm -hmm. um, what, what, what's the type of content you're trying to put on reels that you're finding is like, doesn't feel like a fit? Just like short educational videos yeah. where I tell people like about tips. The only video that went viral was the video, how much I'm making on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I didn't get any subscription, maybe like 20 or 40 subscribers right. from it. Right. Uh, I just got a lot of views. And um, how does Instagram know what the video is about? So it's like, analyzing the, the right. Voice, right I mean there's so much information that goes into mm -hmm. it and to answer your question yep captions like play a role hashtags play a role mm -hmm. but it's really taking a look at like who is like consuming the content and what mm -hmm. other content have they consumed in the past mm -hmm. um, and trying to serve up you know relevance a relevant piece of content which to me is so exciting because in the past I think you know you'd have to collaborate and somebody would have yeah. to like you know uh, uh, cross post your stuff for, for you to really get growth but with reels you get exposure to an unconnected audience from right from the beginning or does it work like YouTube so I know with YouTube 
the, the video got gets promoted to subscribers first, right. and then YouTube sees how how subscribers react. Is it the same with Reels? Well, YouTube also like like it goes into search as well. Like it like yeah, it goes everywhere. Yeah. But I think subscribers really decide <laughs> the destiny of the video for the first two weeks, yeah. and then like if the crowd outside of your subscribers uh, starts to get interested, then it starts right. promoting. Right. There, there, the with Reels, it, it 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 goes to both, and I think one of the reasons why you know Reels I like, came about is because I think people like have like you know the content they want to put out to their following and their audience mm -hmm. but there's also like you know who, what they want to put out to an unconnected audience and mm -hmm. that's why there's the whole option to not even put it on your profile yeah. which I don't recommend I think you're still trying to get the most amount of yeah. following put it out there but mm -hmm. a little bit of a tip like you can actually um, you know put it on your profile by toggling it on mm -hmm. and then hit the three dots icon after your reel is up and actually remove it from the grid and your distribution won't be changed at all Interesting. in terms of feed mm -hmm. uh, though of course if people come to your profile and don't see it but that's another thing oh, people don't interesting. realize so you, if you delete it it's still in the, in your subscribers feed so yeah, but so they don't see it on your actual profile precisely oh, so the, the biggest I thought thing, it was a bug <laughs> no 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 the biggest thing is like you have to like you'll ne you won't get a second chance right now to hit mm -hmm. that toggle on mm -hmm. right to put it in like yeah, your, your feed um, but well once that's up it's basically being distributed and then it's a matter of do you want to stay on your profile grid mm -hmm. or not interesting and most okay. people don't know that for reels and for IGTV for that matter um, if you hit the three dots icon on the post you can choose to remove from uh, profile interesting yeah and um, so what would be the strategy around timing uh, timing the reels is it okay to just do since it's promoted to audience outside yeah. your uh, followers, uh, can I just post 10 reels in a day and then take a <laughs> one week break? <laughs> uh, I, 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 I wouldn't uh, because I think at the end of the day, like, like you know, uh, you don't want to overload the system and like, mm -hmm. you know, but put put so many posts out because your following is still a portion of it, okay. especially. So they would be overwhelmed. They would definitely be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think uh, like uh, I'm always a fan of like batch producing and scheduled release. Right. Yeah. So shooting a bunch of videos in a day and then, and then just okay. having it come out. So um, I think like uh, I would not recommend that strategy at all mm -hmm. uh, and uh, would definitely like pace it out. And also like, a lot of people ask like, what time should I post, John? Like how, like, I think it's all about like, can you keep every variable constant mm -hmm. so that you could tweak the content and understand. Mm -hmm. um, so Timing really matters on Instagram. It does, yeah, it Especially does. Especially for like posting, when I do a post at like 9 p.m. because I have a lot of European audience, and yeah. a lot of audience in Asia, like 9 p.m. California time, I get 50,000 likes. I post 3 p.m. California time when everyone's asleep, I get like maximum 20,000 <laughs> likes. That's crazy how it affects yeah. the algorithm. And that's why we put it in the analytics, right? Of like showing like when your audience yeah. is peaking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if people aren't looking at that, I would definitely recommend it. But uh, yeah, it's a factor. I mean, uh, with chronological feed many years ago, I, I like, you know, that was a bigger deal, mm -hmm. right? But now hopefully like, you know, with like, you know, the algorithm, it just makes it easier for you to time it but not have to stress about it mm -hmm. so i always hear about like when are you going back to chronological feed when are you going back to chronological feed i'm like do you do do you guys really want that yeah. <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yeah. just kind of put more of a stress on the time aspect as opposed to the content aspect attention to everyone who is aspiring to become a creator i have a free Substack newsletter where i talk about what it takes to become a creator in 2021 one of my latest emails is about making five hundred thousand dollars on youtube a month subscribe and start reading and get tips to become a creator going back to like feed as a way to grow but also collaborations and then how do you grow through feed uh, so, <laughs> so can feed, we stop there? Because yeah, I can't. <laughs> right, right. So I think I think then it's like taking a look at like what type of feed posts. And I think mm -hmm. so many people jump to immediately doing video. And I would just start with one uh, uh, photo post, like make it static and just try to feel out what type of content your audience is interested in. And I think one of the most underrated strategies is using stories to really um, pull your audience in terms of what content they want before putting it on mm. feed. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so many people don't, like they see their audience as a community, which it absolutely is, but your audience is also a focus group. Yeah. And to me, um, Instagram has some of the best uh, interactivity tools to just get a gut check of what your audience mm -hmm. was and people don't use it often enough, yeah. right? Um, 
like creating a poll like why do you follow me and totally. your favorite topics totally are, yeah exactly like I, I i put up a poll the the other day i'm like hey guys what more what type of content do you want to see from me uh, my life at instagram mm -hmm. uh, uh me talking about like marketing and advertising campaigns me talking about the creator economy mm -hmm. or other dm mm -hmm. me um, and right from there, I could see like, okay, people are very interested in the creator economy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start that, posting that was number more one? about it. Yeah, that yeah. was number one. Oh, and, uh, interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so, and uh, uh, I was like, because it's very different, right? Because otherwise it'd be like, oh, like maybe I should like just show more behind the scenes of what mm -hmm. it's like to work at Instagram. And, and no, but people want to see like my commentary on like the creator economy mm -hmm. and doing that gut check every 10,000 followers or so. Because mm -hmm. um, your audience changes, taste and preferences changes. So yeah. that's something that I think people don't realize how stories and feed work together but mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like you've, you've done that and uh, I've done that yeah I'm actually working on a it won't be an app I think it's a desktop but for youtubers yeah. to um, it's kind of a planner where youtubers can plan their videos and they can also share their plans with their followers and followers can either upvote or donate for the video right and cool. they also can share their information like I'm a creator myself or I'm an entrepreneur and so you see that the majority of entrepreneurs actually voted for this video yeah so if you want to target entrepreneurs better brilliant. start that one brilliant so yeah, it's and it's good. interesting that you're doing that for YouTube because I feel like there's not as many interactivity tools or like the community tab isn't used as there is a community tab and there are some analytics but YouTube never shares like what people actually right. do that is hidden. Right. same same on Instagram you yeah. can never see like I always wanted to see what celebrities follow me so I can invite them to <laughs> interviews because <laughs> sometimes I just check out people's profile and they're like oh my god he has two million followers and he's following me right right but right. the only way to discover that is just to follow people and check yeah, their profiles. yeah or you could go yeah of course you go through your own following and search but yeah, yeah. it's not as easy as it can be yeah yeah, yeah for sure and uh let's talk about i also wanted to talk about uh verification instagram yeah yeah Any can i mention one other thing on the growth side for people who don't have reels though yeah oh so yeah yeah sorry we're, we're like yeah, <laughs> jumping yeah. from on top no no it's okay <laughs> i just want to make sure like folks because I, I hear it like people who don't have reels like what can yeah. i do in, in 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 those countries i'd say like definitely look at like live the new four-way feature it's is it everywhere it's 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 i believe in it's in just about every country mm -hmm. um and uh, it, it started in India and then, you know, it expanded uh, over the past like five, six months. But it is one of the best tools to collaborate in real time. And people like, you know, like the follower like tab is like, or like the ability to follow is very visible. And I've seen people like grow in subscribers quite a bit. Like even like I, I've been hosting like weekly lives or doing these office hours and the jump in followers has been dramatic. Yeah. And I think that's another thing people don't realize or mm -hmm. even know that the four way live feature is there because they continue to do solo or one on one. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. But mm -hmm. if you're thinking about growing, just four-way automatic collaboration helps a lot. Okay, and so post stories, they don't get promoted too much because they're oversaturated. Yeah. Um, and what else do we have? That's it. So we have... So oh, IGTV. Right, right. And, and it's not that they're not promoted. The way I think about it, so all five surfaces of like feed, stories, reels, IGTV, um, and live. Uh, there's engagement formats and there's growth formats mm -hmm. to me like reels and and live are right now the two biggest growth formats mm -hmm. and then engagement would be feed stories and then igtv because mm -hmm. um, you're reaching your existing audience as opposed to tapping in okay so igtv is no longer promoted uh it's not that it's no longer promoted it's just that it won't go to like a as big of an unconnected surface as mm -hmm. like let's say like the reels tab like mm -hmm. you know how visible that is it's yeah. like uh, uh yeah it's everywhere it's, it's everywhere place, yeah. and, and that's like increasing mm -hmm. demand and you know if you're creator and you can increase supply and mm -hmm. you could take advantage of that especially in these early days and do you think with IGTV you're gonna try to compete not you Instagram <laughs> <laughs> try to compete with YouTube but lost uh uh, I think, uh, you know, it's hard to, I, I, I don't think the, the battle's over, but like, it's hard to um, go from what a platform has been known for to something else, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah. I think YouTube started with like long form or like, you know, mm -hmm. really like found their niche there and like they optimize on watch time so well, yeah. right? Um, but now they're trying to like come on sh the short form short. territory, right? Yeah. Uh, TikTok is short form, now testing like, like three minute plus video. Mm -hmm. Instagram is like short form, like like in terms of stories, reels, like all these formats. So uh, I, I wouldn't say the battle is over, but it's definitely hard to change people's like habits mm -hmm. when it comes to checking an app for shorter periods of time versus yeah. going to YouTube and sitting down for like yeah. 15, 20 minutes. 
I don't think getting some features like 2x speed on ICTs. Oh yeah, I know, I know. Or at least yeah. getting back to the same spot where you left. <laughs> like, I know, I know. Because sometimes I'm watching one hour IGTVs and then my, somebody calls me <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I can I know. never go back. Yeah, or background listening and all that. Yeah, yeah there's, all there's that. a lot of stuff that, uh, yeah, it's just like the consumption of long form video is different than short form, right? Exactly. But uh, yeah, all those have to be built out. But they're working on it or? They're working on it. I think the biggest priority is really monetization because it's such a harder lift to make yeah. a long form video than mm -hmm. short form and how do you make that make sense to creators who are putting their livelihood into mm -hmm. it so it's very much like the um, revenue sharing program that's uh, in beta and expanding out is but it's only for IGTV now right correct in terms of uh, rev share uh, like like an ad being placed in the middle of your video mm -hmm. um, and also you know it doesn't make as much sense with like a short form video to interrupt it with an ad yeah. so that's why like it's almost like if you're offering like the buffet of everything to a creator how can you not have long form and yeah. how can you not compete even though there's somebody like a competitor way ahead right mm -hmm. now why why don't you just start sharing um, revenue from you know stories ads we, we all get them yeah because even if you don't produce IGTV videos you still get ads in your feed right 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 it's hard to find the attribution of like who who do you give uh, that credit to right like there's yeah. so much but yeah because there's one story and then it's followed by another right versus the video is like that's that's your video Very and like if it's in the middle yeah. middle of it you're like the sole like like mm -hmm. person who's bringing that content but it is it is honestly a great point i've always thought about like there's like who's producing the content and the inventory that the ads get placed yeah. in between Creators. So YouTube, yeah, and YouTube would still pay you for pre-roll ads even if you haven't started watching the video. Mm. Like even if a subscriber haven't started watching the video, you still get right, right. Revenue. But it's interesting because like that journey is like much clearer. Yeah, right? he actually clicked exactly, the video. and and it's your video, and yeah. it's like like okay, and that advertiser wants to advertise on like that type of so yeah. versus you know um, let's say like uh, you know uh, the the YouTube masthead right on the homepage who mm -hmm. gets credit for that right because there's so no many one, right? people. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. right? Because there's so many mm -hmm. pieces of content that attribute to that yeah. being there. But uh, it's a great point, I think. Yeah, uh, but I never thought about that. I was just thinking they were greedy. <laughs> sharing that no, part I mean, of I mean, it's, uh, yeah. yeah, but I think, I think more money going to creators is like, uh, you know, it, it, it's a must. It's yeah. a must. Like, I think they're the backbone of all these platforms in so many yeah. ways. And, and it makes me happy after eight years in the industry to see them getting more credit So yeah. and, and money. Like, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Another question. So Instagram, I think, has been really, really unfriendly to creators. I've never talked oh to my any god. person. Oh my I'm god! I'm sorry, but <laughs> this, yeah, is, okay, like, this is so true. Because at YouTube, I have partner manager. Yeah. The support gets back to me within 24 hours. Yeah. I can complain all the time, and they will help me. Uh, with Instagram, so uh, problem number one is DMing me not support. Is that that's like, the I'm only kidding, that's kidding, the I'm only kidding. support <laughs> I was able to get <laughs> in the past like six months since yeah, we met. Yeah. But before that, like I was trying to get the name Lingua Trip. Yeah. We have a trademark, everything, and it's not taken like there is no profile lingua trip but somehow i can take it yeah. it's just unavailable for some reason try to reach out try to talk to people nothing helped yeah uh then if my my profile got deleted for like 24 hours again something happened never explained it's just you know not having point of contact and just relying on support that can take a month even if you have a million plus followers what would be I then? know, I know. The, the, for that one, like the the support process has been, um, you know, the support teams have been growing, mm -hmm. and they've been trying to like decrease the amount of time it takes to get back to creators, but still a lot of work to do. What's and the average time now? I I, you know? I, I I that I don't know, but I know that uh, they've cut it down significantly. And it's mm -hmm. one of the um, you know things that uh, and also, we talk about a lot. I, I want to see like a person behind it because I know, when I, know. I see a reply, it's like, oh, we're looking into your problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think w what's interesting is like if you think about like the DNA of these platforms and where they came from, it like sh sh shares a lot about why like YouTube has like a partnerships team that is able to like mm -hmm. think about okay like this creator is growing, let's offer support versus like Instagram is thinking about that. There's a there's an amazing partnership team and 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 uh, they're growing, but it's not quite the same as YouTube. And the way I see like having been in both places is like YouTube started as a place for creators, right? Mm -hmm. Initially, like they pivoted, you know, they were a dating site and they. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. like random videos, mm -hmm. like dogs on a skateboard. But but very early on, they're like, we want to be a place for creators, right? Mm -hmm. um, Instagram and Facebook started for a place of like friends and family, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. and uh, of course, like like friends and family don't always need as much support. A mm -hmm. partnerships rep, like it's not as much of a like high touch like human mm -hmm. uh, 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 service. 
But as obviously creators became a bigger deal on Facebook and Instagram, especially Instagram, like then you have to like scale those things up. But it's and it just, takes a while, right? It takes a, a while. Corporation. And and like mm -hmm. hiring the right folks, like training them, like it's, it's such a like high touch business. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right that it's like uh, uh, um, especially like you having followings on both platforms, like it's it's not quite the same. But I know a lot of great work is being done there, and even like more f uh, emerging creators are hearing now from partnerships team. There's incentives now that weren't there before like if you go live for a lot of creators you can make you know a few hundred bucks just to like go for it 15 minutes try it so even at the aspiring and growing levels like there's more like support and, how and you, programs and how do you get connected to those programs do you select yourself or uh, so I, 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 uh, there, there's two ways there's either outreach from the teams uh, as they look at like you know who's growing but there's also a lot of programs that hit creators at scale like a big oh. one that just happened was creators week right and that's a way to like uh, uh, <laughs> I miss that <laughs> <laughs> it was a uh, yeah early June and um, oh I was yeah yeah busy <laughs> yeah um, so uh, uh, yeah, so I mean that that was like a program to like really share like a lot of things that you know Maybe would happen in a one-on-one -on -one conversation in a one-to-many mm -hmm. right and be able to like bring in like speakers and answer like questions like this um, mm -hmm. And uh, and get super candid with creators so uh, more of that to come but you're the where you're coming from with your point is Absolutely valid. Yeah. yeah, I was just yeah four years five years on Instagram like being active and I, I saw so many friends who have over a million followers being blocked and then one month without and this is their source of income this yeah. is where they promote their yeah their stuff and get yeah. deals that that's why when I like when I was there I, like anytime like a creator would DM me I would like really try to like go out of my way or like figure out like uh, guys you're hearing that <laughs> <laughs> it's Instagram <laughs> it's down down below yeah no but uh, honestly even e even now if there's like uh, uh, like uh, you know, um, like when you yeah, you're sure d d yeah no when <laughs> okay. you d when okay. you DM me about reels I I, yeah. I reached out oh to yeah you fixed it in two hours I was like I was checking like, wow reels are here thank you so much of course it okay guys so <laughs> his Instagram is available any problem <laughs> reach out to John <laughs> I, I will honestly try my best because you know like I think that uh, people put their livelihoods into these platforms and like yeah. like like a, a bug or, or something like that that's a serious thing and um, yeah I've always felt that uh, yeah to to try to just like help with that in, in a small and Thank just go to so all my of course that's of course. amazing <laughs> yeah. it's like having someone yeah to actually to actually help I, is the least I could do and, and also it's like uh, yeah it's a b big part of like trying to like help creators so mm. Do you, um, can you talk a little about verification? I know you're not on that team, yeah. but maybe some tips, because again, there are some uh, people who are creators yeah. who are pretty popular, yeah. like have millions of followers, but they're not active in press or right. they're not on TV. Right. Would those people get verified or? Well, it, it, it totally like, uh, it's like case by case basis, but like, yeah, the, 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 the like public notability is an important uh, part of it. And But what, uh, if it's, what if this public notability only happens on Instagram? So they became popular just there. I think like uh, uh, it has to be a bit of both. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think a ton of people reach out, like that is a very common request. Like, can you verify, like, mm -hmm. like I've, I've had this press. And uh, I think a lot of times it's like taking a look at, at like, um, you know, is, is it, are, are you like a uh, public figure that if somebody were to come to the platform and look at a bunch of other pages, there'd be confusion as to which the more, most authentic mm. one is. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, there's a lot of people who like would like reach out and like there's not, you know, uh, uh, like a question of, of, you know, who the real account is or mm -hmm. who the like public figure is. And uh, um, so, yeah, so I, th I think th there's a combination of a lot of factors, but definitely like the, the notability and press side of it is important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what worked for me, I, w I just, reapplied and reapplied and then yeah that's the other thing up. like <laughs> yeah if, if you didn't get it once like there's no harm in like reapplying and mm -hmm. just like trying again because like things change you grow like people will cover you and write about you so uh yeah most people like just kind of like put their hands up after one time but uh yeah no harm in reapplying and i've seen many people who don't get it on their first time get mm -hmm. it on their second or third okay i got on 10th <laughs> yeah I, I was so happy because yeah. it really helps with reaching out to people i know i yeah. know yeah you, you and gonna it stand out in the in the i know yeah yeah I, 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 absolutely yeah, yeah that's real one more question about reels that i forgot to ask um yeah of course my reels are edited by an editor yeah. uh, using adobe premiere whatever yeah. does instagram prefer reels that are edited within the app or it doesn't matter. No, no. I, I think, uh, um, uh, yeah, like whatever feels most comfortable. Um, 
but uh, yeah, being mindful of, like uh, other like marks from like like other platforms. Like if there's a watermark, uh, mm. that's the only thing I'd say is like uh, just try to keep it like original. Pl to platform and Instagram actually native. understands. Yeah, there's they, a watermark. They, there's yeah. a there's a po post that was put out like about how much they uh, the platform values originality and like mm. that is like uh, like a, a a part of it for sure. If I want to understand my followers better, like see I don't know who they follow or what content they consume, so I could adjust yeah, my yeah, content. Yeah, of course. Do you think that's gonna be not in terms of not even in terms of API, but better understanding people who. who oh follow well, you. I mean, analytics and insights is a huge thing that's going to be like improved it is. and. Uh, oh yeah, it, because if you want to see like my audience is super international, yeah. but all I see is the first four countries, I think, and yeah. then you can't really see the whole the whole thing. I only see the first four. Right. It doesn't really reflect yeah. the audience. I mean, I think that's where it goes back to like you know, especially like you think about like. Instagram and YouTube Studio, right? Like yeah. with YouTube Studio, it's like all of this, like 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 you know, you see the click through rate, you're able to see the impressions. Yeah, it's, very thorough. it's very thorough. But that took a while too. Like I remember um, when when I was on the team that was building like YouTube Studio, like there were so many. Oh, you, you were building. YouTube yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we we were they, we had a wonderful team in Zurich, and I remember just like traveling there because they were building it. I was based in our headquarters in San Bruno, and we would take this list of like what are the most popular requests that we mm -hmm. get from creators. Click through rate was one of them. Uh, being able to have like the percentage of people who like you know actually see and click through was was huge but uh it's it's another thing of like if you were a creator platform at the first thing you're gonna you're gonna hear more about we want analytics we want analytics and mm -hmm. prioritize it and uh you know a lot of like users on instagram like friends and family don't really need analytics yeah, right yeah. um but now as creators are becoming more of a focus more important there's there's more than people are thinking about that naturally like the teams that are building analytics are accelerating their process so there's a lot more to come there and uh, and and yeah because like if you have better insights you can make better content yeah and wow so in on instagram you were with working with creators right you were yeah. partnership manager yeah. with, at youtube you were like creator studio or uh well both both places pr product marketing mm -hmm. so uh like uh product marketing is just basically a fancy way to say like you know like thinking about what do people need and assessing mm -hmm. that like you know like okay what do established creators need what mm -hmm. do aspiring creators need um and then helping like inform like the product and engineers like here's what should be the top priority over the next six months and mm -hmm. there's a lot of collaboration in that and then like after they go and build it it's like okay this thing is now in like early f stages in beta mm -hmm. right how do we get in front of the right people to, like test it and give us feedback and then ultimately like once it's like in a good state how do we market it mm -hmm. how do we like go to market like who are like the people that we want like the creators um <clears throat> to speak about it so mm -hmm. um in both places it, it was similar role product marketing but uh, yeah, di di different landscape between YouTube and Instagram. Okay, and so what's your plan? Let's talk about your future. <laughs> Do you have a plan? Like I'm posting every Monday. I'm posting on Instagram every Tuesday. <laughs> I'm making a YouTube video. How? Do, no, let's start with this. How do you feel? Like, do you feel <laughs> scared? <laughs> no, I, no? I, I, I felt uh, nervous. Uh, like when, when I was just leaving Instagram because you know it was th about three years there. It was about five years at YouTube and just like being outside of that structure and working so with first time, so right? First time. First time. Congrats. <laughs> Thank Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's so many wonderful people there that, that I'm going to miss and that's a definite part of it. But um, I've always just, I, I feel like the reason why I joined YouTube and the reason why I joined Instagram is the reason why I'm now leaving. You know, I love working with creators so mm -hmm. much so that, you know, I've, I've always wanted to try being one. And during my free time, I've always said to myself, like, I want to, like, build a following to understand how these platforms work. Mm -hmm. So I could be the, you know, person who's, like, giving good feedback to our engineers and product teams to build products mm -hmm. for creators. And that's why I'm always, like, very responsive in the DMs. Because, like, if I hear from a few people, like, this is a problem that's probably a trend and that we should address it as a platform. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, I started growing a following on, you know, uh, 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 even on like LinkedIn, like 50,000 followers on LinkedIn, about 75,000 on Clubhouse, holding, hosting a weekly show, mm -hmm. uh, 40,000 on Instagram. Not big numbers, but, you know, I, I would say I'm, I, I, I try to de-risk things whenever possible. So I've been like trying to grow the, these different followings. And then when brand deals started coming in or like interview You're opportunities. You're already getting them? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Nice. But I couldn't say yes to them, like working at like a company because there's a, you know, there's a approvals process. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to myself, like, you know what, I feel like we're in a window of time 
Um, I was also trying to like do a weekly show on Clubhouse that like I would get these interviews with people who I feel like I would have no business interviewing otherwise, like mm -hmm. co-founder of Netflix, you know, New York Times best-selling authors like mm -hmm. Adam Grant, Angela Duckworth, top mm -hmm. creators like Michelle Phan and, and Jake Paul. And I was like, you know what? I see like the brand deals opportunity. I see like this interview like show, like this mm -hmm. the creator show taking off. I want to do a video version of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think like I could balance that with yeah. my day job and then also be a good fiance say to my partner and, and one day like a dad you know yeah. so I was like now's this window let, 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 let me take a risk and uh, and uh, you know go for it and so how long has it been two weeks right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. so what does your schedule <laughs> look like um, it's uh it's it, it's very different but I feel like there's so m I, I just love the um, freedom and, and autonomy you know even like some of these like like brand opportunities like I was able to just like build on relationships that I had in the past like mm -hmm. I was working with like uh, this NFT platform called origin mm -hmm. and I talked to him about becoming their creator in residence to is it Alex's platform or uh, no origin is a uh, um, uh, it's by uh, uh, the founders are Matt and Josh okay. and uh, the full name is origin protocol mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm um, you know I was talking to them because I was like hosting a lot of their clubs House interviews mm. with like like celebrities like like uh, Ryan Tedder who's like the lead singer of One Republic and I was like you know it sounds like this is a need that as you guys like continue to have NFT drops I could host these interviews and produce content so that's also a part of it and uh, there's just so many uh, deer. <laughs> and, and wild deer uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah I think it's like my day to day is like really thinking about all right what's the content schedule for the week mm -hmm. uh, what are the pieces of content what are you using for that. Notion, yes, mm -hmm. I love Notion. Mm -hmm. Yes, lo love Notion. Uh, uh, still a diehard fan of like Google spreadsheets, so mm -hmm. use that a lot too. But I, I think about, I have a calendar that basically is, um, okay, here are the days of the week, here are the different platforms, mm -hmm. and here's what I'll be posting on each of them every single day is my goal. Wow. Um, and so of it's course, like a full time? Is it Six yeah. hours, eight hours a day? Uh, I feel like I always think about it, so it's hard mm -hmm. to put like an hour. Yeah. I don't know, how, yeah. how is it like, uh, can you put an hour on? Well, I can now. Yeah. <laughs> have kids, but yeah, it's been like two hours yeah, per yeah. day now. Yeah. Uh, but before that, it was four. Because I couldn't yeah. just balance between kids and yeah. more yeah. if I worked more. Yeah, so I think, I think, I think my philosophy is always like, um, acceleration than liberation mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's like it's like I probably have to go harder now in these like early yeah. days to figure out a structure and a system um, and then uh, after that it, it makes it easy you could focus on other things like you're doing like these like side projects or like yeah. thinking more strategically and all that um, but yeah so that's kind of like how I'm thinking about it and uh, yeah put together this spreadsheet if like anybody listening is interested I could like share it like uh, oh yeah let's, yeah that would be uh, cool I, um, I love those nitty-gritty things yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spreadsheets, so. yeah um so yeah it's uh, like that has helped like create a lot of process because it's like and there's like formulas I put in there from like uh, you know I, I've learned so much during the day job of like how to like create process and all that so there's like formulas in there like okay take the caption from Facebook and like Take only the first two lines and put it on Twitter mm. for the character Interesting. count. So nice. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and that, how do you get those people uh, into your interviews? Do you just cold email them, reach out on Instagram, or what's the strategy? A few strategies. Um, one uh, is uh, Clubhouse as it was taking off. I knew that if I put in more time and grew my following, there would almost be this like like arbitrage opportunity where like somebody who like okay like you know how you did your interview with Justin Khan on your channel yeah so he was uh. trying to come onto YouTube oh yeah 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 right? exactly I was so happy Gary Tan started a channel I'm like yes yes yeah, <laughs> Justin yeah. Khan, I'm like yeah VCs are starting channel. there you go there you go and, and how are they gonna get plugged into the community yeah. they work with amazing creators like yourself who have a following right yeah, awesome. so my whole thought was like okay Clubhouse is taking off I'm gonna spend so much time here just trying to do something different, host a show, like like, and really get embedded in the community, like add value. I would spend like, I just, uh, you, you did not want to know my screen time when I was like. <laughs> <laughs> here in Europe. Yeah. No, I remember when I was just starting out Clubhouse, I would do like every single interview. Yeah. I would join every room <laughs> and raise hands. But then, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I think it was like hyping in yeah, yeah. March or April, and now it's like stable, right? Yeah, I think also the pandemic and like there, there's like the lockdown accelerated, mm -hmm. uh, like many things. So I was like, you know, I see this window, and I remember like during the early days of YouTube, of like people who put in the time then, they didn't have to like grind as hard later because mm -hmm. they kind of built that initial yeah. funnel. So the first answer to your question is like, as like like celebrities and people try to come on Clubhouse, I knew that if I 
grew my following and could bring audience to them, but also like really like hosted a good conversation yeah. and would be thorough in the research, mm -hmm. I could like get people that way. Yeah. So that was like one avenue. Um, another one was like uh, when I hosted an interview, like like another magical thing was like really, I, like incredible people hop on the stage mm -hmm. and join in. So I was interviewing um, Adam Grant, mm -hmm. uh, New York Times bestselling author, Warren professor. Uh, he's actually my professor back at school. And wow. uh, uh, when I was interviewing him, uh, the CEO of Netflix, or the co-founder of Netflix was on the stage. Amazing. So I reached out to him afterwards because mm -hmm. it, it seemed like he really enjoyed the interview. Yeah. I'm like, hey, can I interview you next? And wow. he was my next interview. Wow, amazing. How yeah. What about Jake Paul? And then Jake Paul, um, Jake Paul uh, and I met at YouTube and uh, he had an NFT drop that was mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. and he had this boxing match. Yeah, it's also, you need to strategically reach yes. out. If they have a book, this is how I got Jimmy O. Yang because yes. he was touring uh, yes. the States promoting his yes. book. Yes, yes. Yeah. Can I give another tip to your audience if they're thinking about like how to find somebody? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go to Amazon and find the upcoming like releases. Oh, nice. And Just go and t take a look at those people. Those mm -hmm. people, like there's that window of time where they're gonna be so hungry to do mm -hmm. a publicity tour. Yeah. Um, and that's when you're more likely to get a yes. Yeah. So, and that's why I was like excited to like, like work with like um, uh, Origin, this NFT platform, because I know they're bringing on a lot of like big talent mm -hmm. who want to promote an NFT drop. And I want to like interview these people and be able to like speak about it, but also like, like simplify this whole like crypto and NFT world as well. Yeah. So uh, yeah, another part of it is like the window of like their promotion uh, and like trying to host an inter interview with them. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, so that those are a big part. And then lastly, like referrals, like I would ask like, like, uh, you know, people like uh, after the interview ends, like, is there somebody else who you think mm -hmm. would be good to be on the show? And then okay. people would like, uh, yeah, help that and, way. And this is how you grow on saturated platforms, right? Because a lot of people these days would tell like, you won't be able to grow on YouTube because it's oversaturated. You won't be able to grow on Instagram. Uh, Clubhouse might be an opportunity. TikTok, I don't know. Uh, depends but i think you can grow uh, but this would be number one strategy what would you say like what would you say to those people who are like i want to be a creator but everything is oversaturated too late oh well i would say is like yeah first is like taking a look at the entire like landscape and i'm even talking about the details of it yeah youtube maybe overall like feels saturated i would say like a few like th th there's definitely opportunity but then youtube shorts Mm -hmm. is is a good opportunity and like like uh, uh and it comes back to supply and demand right youtube shorts is like the supply is nowhere near like mm -hmm. what it is for um you know longer form video and yet the demand is you know growing because they're putting that logo and that icon in front of so many people yeah. right yeah and it's everywhere it's everywhere yeah and everywhere and like you could grow with shorts and then diversify mm -hmm. um or you could look at a brand new platform like clubhouse and uh, think about okay i'm gonna grow there and diversify mm -hmm. uh one of the most amazing things that happens like as I grew to 75k on Clubhouse my Instagram grew by about 25k nice yeah that's nice and so a lot of like like mm -hmm. those like relationships and like it like and I also try to host Instagram lives and all that again like overall very mature platform Instagram live mm -hmm. untapped opportunity mm -hmm. right nice. um, so yeah I think it's like LinkedIn untapped opportunity like most people laugh when I like why do you talk about LinkedIn I'm like that's a great what do you place do, videos to, there or uh, mostly uh, posts and uh, like like I try to give like, you know, uh, uh, career advice or like talk about the creator economy. That's where I actually put out another poll because they have a polling feature. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you guys want to hear about? And on LinkedIn versus the poll I did on Instagram, um, people wanted to hear more about, uh, you know, like like my like thoughts on marketing and advertising. Mm, interesting, so different crowd. Mm -hmm. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So that's why I think, yeah, treating your audience as a focus group is important. What did your fiance and your family say when <laughs> you, you said you're leaving? <laughs> oh, I mean, they are so supportive. Like, uh, like I feel like really as like a first, genera first generation um, kid of immigrants, like my, my parents have been so wonderful. Like they're like, you want to do this, go ahead. Or like, we believe in you. And like, like to even to the point where my dad was like, when I wanted to play basketball as a kid, he's like, yeah, you could be in the NBA. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's no chance <laughs> that anybody in my family is going to be in the NBA. Uh, and it's almost like sometimes like, uh, uh, it's like, uh, you know, I feel like the, we, we got to be grounded in reality, but uh, yeah, they've seen me like doing this and, and you know, and, and, and growing like an audience and they were like absolutely support. My fiance was like, yeah, you, I wish you did it sooner. Cause like I was so nice. consumed by all of this, but uh, now I feel like I could be more present for her and for like you know building a community and uh, to try and do this as a you know uh, the thing that's top of mind amazing so what's your next goal do you have a goal in terms of numbers or like 
by the end of this year. Uh, the I ideal scenario. <laughs> I, I, m another mantra that I have and I, I try to uh, share with creators is like I focus on um, uh, output, not outcome. Mm. And so I try to think about like how many videos can I produce a week, not how many subscribers, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I could control like that first number, the second number, especially if I'm listening and experimenting, mm -hmm. the, the subscriber base will grow. So my goal is I want to take the interviews that I've been doing like weekly uh, um, uh, or trying to do weekly on Clubhouse and trying to film like an in-person version of that. Mm -hmm. So I've been lining up like a few interviews for the upcoming weeks, trying to film actually like a setup like this, which is why it's, it's so impressive. And yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I wish you guys could see the BTS. I mean, maybe we'll, we'll share it, but uh, I want to like film it, but also get like, uh, I I don't know keep it a bit rough as well like so it's like you know native to youtube and then cut it down for like TikTok reels and shorts mm -hmm. and then also think about like yeah what's my like yeah you know that's the interview that's like the pillar and then how do i you know supplement that with other content but the big thing is like interviews with creators and celebrities just to like go a bit deeper and really get into the tactics and insights so mm -hmm. again my goal is always if that notepad is not filled at the end of the interview then you know mm -hmm. I, I, I i there's more that i need to do for the audience mm -hmm. and just wondering i'm sure you're going to be successful because of all your strategy and what you've been doing uh, but if by the end of the year you realize you're not able to make a living out of it would you go back to corporate or you're just gonna hassle more um because i know a lot of people have this doubt like they're quitting their jobs they're like but they're like would i be able or would i not <laughs> like what are your thoughts right uh now? i don't i don't think too much about that i yeah. like uh i i probably should but i'm just like so focused on like no i think that's the best approach yeah <laughs> i don't even think about that as a do you know when you could see I, I feel like i don't know what's gonna happen but i see a version of this like i i don't know it's like uh uh, I'm, I'm not thinking of failure I as think, an option. I think, yeah, I think the most successful people don't never think about yeah, the failure. They yeah. have a lot of different plans how to get to the goal, right. but they never think right, about right, giving right. up. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think that was amazing. Of course, that of course. That was super helpful. Yeah. And again, people are going to reach out to you. No, hit me up, hit me up. And yeah. I'm hoping to also share this on my YouTube, like like, like uploading like the, you know, just real talk about the creator economy. And uh, I want to walk people through like my first like brand deals and all that just to show like the Have you already got one? Yeah, yeah, I want to share like, like, because I think there's such an interesting like question of like when you're still growing, should you take brand deals for free and build a relationship or should you like be charging a fee? And Depends how do you on think the about brand, the fee? I guess. And exactly. And then also, I think a lot of people wait for like inbound. I think there's a whole strategy around reaching out to brands, even if you're like Crunch early. Base. It, you see who just raised Series A? That means they have a little marketing budget and you reach out. This is what we do all the time. Brilliant. Yeah. Wait, tell me what. So you like look at Crunchbase and then. You we, s we look at Crunchbase because my blog is Silicon Valley Girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very easy to reach out to Bay Area companies right, because right. it's like very relatable yeah. and we just see her a series a for <laughs> consumer products yeah and my sales manager reaches out to them and says like hey this is marina's media kit do you want that's and brilliant we just got an amazing deal with notion notion bought the whole like three channels adobe like all of those brands incredible yeah well, tell me what, what advice would you give to me and like creators who are trying to grow now like uh what's like i mean you're so smart and like tactical i, I would reach out to again all the companies that you're using and if you see that they're advertising with other youtubers like skillshare is yeah, all over the all place over, right yeah and reach out to them because yeah. you're the same demographic yeah. and they're always looking and they're, they're working through an agency but they are going to redirect you to yeah, the agency. yeah so i would just reach out and create a media kit that yeah. presents you like who's your audience yeah um because they're all looking for totally new channel. totally media kit yeah. and crunch rate. that's a pro tip that's yeah. good yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah. Cool. cool well thanks for having me on yeah. and having me over thank this you so much thank you yeah cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, hit the red button down below. And if you have any questions for John, uh, comment down below. We might have another interview. Yeah, I'll be in the comment section and <laughs> yeah. DM. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys around. Awesome. Thank you. Of Thanks course, a lot. Of course. Thanks for having me.